today we'll be talking about Microsoft Azure certification path for the year 2022. Microsoft this year have got 20 specific exams for Azure. Now what I've done is I've uh, broken these exams and certifications down into a few categories, right? So we'll be talking about the fundamental exams, what exams are at an intermediate level, what exams are at an expert level. Then we will go into specific and specialization based certifications like which certifications would be for infrastructure, databases and speciality. Now the first exam that we will be talking about AZ900 or Azure Fundamentals. Starting with the validity of this test, once you get the certificate, it's yours for life. You don't have to renew it, you don't have to retake any exams. If you have it, you have it. And this is the case with all fundamental certification. Azure Fundamental, this is aimed at beginners and you do not need any prior cloud experience. You could be, you don't even have to be from IT, you could be from sales or marketing and still take this exam. So. The purpose of this test is to check your proficiency, whether you understand the fundamentals or basics of cloud or not. Not a super difficult exam, it's very easy. It's going to be 40 to 60 questions in this exam and the passing score out of a thousand would be 700. Exam duration around 90 minutes, 85 to be very exact. And this is not a super expensive exam or super expensive certification. It's going to be 99 USD, but it will depend from one country to another. Now the next exam is DP900. DP900 is Azure Data Fundamentals. This exam like AZ900 is also uh, aimed at beginners, right? Most of the focus during this exam is on database and storage offerings that are present in Azure. So this is for beginners. You do not have to be a specialist. You do not have to have any experience with infrastructure or data, right? So you can just be a total noob and still take this exam. Uh, core concepts that this exam would discuss would be relational and non-relational databases. What are different storage offerings on Microsoft Azure? So exam cost is pretty much the same as AZ $999, depending on where you are. 40 to 60 questions in the exam, one hour exam. Next exam, or the last fundamental exam, as far as Azure goes, is AI fundamentals. Exam cost in this one would be $100 again, $99, 40 to 60 questions and 700 passing marks. Now, this is aimed at AI enthusiasts, but still beginners. You could still be an IT beginner, you could still be learning stuff and uh, take this exam. If you're interested in AI, if you're interested in how AI implementations take place into a cloud environment, this is the exam for you. But most of the things that you will be studying here for the certification are going to be very Azure centric. You do not have to be uh, an engineer or anything like that. So now next we move on to the intermediate or associate level certifications. These are super popular, first of all, right? Not as popular as AZ900, but as far as like a level of certifications go, they are very popular. Uh, for associate and intermediate level certifications, you would need you would need some basic IT experience. You cannot be an absolute beginner and expect to clear these, right? Because you can, but it's going to be difficult. The first and the most common one that we have here in intermediate and associate level certifications is AZ104 or also known as Azure Administrator. Azure Administrator is aimed at experienced people who have like a few years of experience in IT, preferably um, a few years of experience in Azure specifically. If, if you have it, that's uh, good to have. But actually, there are no prerequisites to taking this exam. It's not that you have to take 900 before you take 104. Not really. You can just go ahead straight away and prepare for AZ104 as well. Knowledge wise, uh, it's a very infrastructure heavy exam. Uh, they will be talking about uh, things that are present in Microsoft Azure, uh, what you need to learn. It will it will basically be your first deep dive into Azure. AZ900 explores everything at the surface. What AZ104 does is it goes slightly deeper, right? So when you see this topic of contents, you would see that AZ104 and AZ900 look very similar. Uh, as far as the content goes, but the depth of it is very different, right? Here, they expect you to know basic stuff. It's a smooth level up from AZ900. I'm not saying that you have to do AZ900 before this one, but if you do it, then it will be a very simple path forward. And if you're preparing for an architect exam like AZ305 now, we, we used to have AZ303 and 304, but AZ305 we'll be talking about later. But if you're preparing for an architect level exam, I would suggest that you take this one. This is super, super critical. And for some architect exams now, it's mandatory. 
but AZ-104 is a great exam. Cost $165, 40 to 60 questions, about 50. You have to uh, score 700 out of 1000 in order to take this certification in order to actually pass. And the exam duration is quite long. It's a 180 minute exam, so it's it's not short by any means. Uh, so you will have enough time to do your 50 questions in. Gives you a lot of time to overthink. Uh, please don't do that. So the next exam that we will be talking about is AZ204. AZ204 is developing solutions for Microsoft Azure. This is aimed at experienced programmers or developers. You need to have uh, a programming base, a coding base, or must know one language uh, that is supported on Microsoft Azure. For example, Java or Python or C++. This exam requires a lot of dev heavy knowledge, right? So you need to be a developer, you need to understand the basics. Uh, and it's also an Azure deep dive. So the context of this one is not programming. The context of this one is programming, but on Azure, right? Creating applications, but on Azure. So you'll be learning a lot about like pass application services, uh, functions, how to create functions in an Azure context. Before you take this exam, I would recommend, like this would be a personal recommendation that you take AZ-900 or you study for AZ-900 at least so that you know the basics of Azure. Cost for this would be $165, uh, 40 to 60 questions, passing score is 700 minutes, right? A three hour exam as AZ-104. Now the next certification that we will be talking about is Azure Security Engineer. This is aimed at security engineers, IT admins. This is very similar to AZ-104 in the way how the exam is like difficulty wise, even the topics are very similar to AZ-104. But this is more focused on security. This is more Azure Active Directory heavy, this exam. So a, a lot of Azure Active Directory, you can expect a lot of Azure policies, security, governance, remediation. So focus will change. Focus on AZ-104 is on the infrastructure. Focus on AZ-500 is on uh, security. It's $165 and 40 to 60 questions when i took it it was about 55 when i was seeing this one uh 700 marks would you would require for passing and it's a 180 minute test moving on to expert level certifications there are only two expert level certifications as far as azure is concerned first we'll be talking about az305 that is azure architect or designing infrastructure solutions as an architect on microsoft azure this test is aimed at experienced people who have experience working as engineers or as architects in AWS, GCP or in Azure, right? So you need to have your cloud fundamentals very strong. You need to uh, be very clear about your basics and principles of being an architect, right? Uh, you must have Azure administrator level of knowledge when you're taking this test. So that's going to be super, super important and critical. Still, AZ-305 is an infrastructure heavy test. It's not design heavy, uh, AZ-304 used to be, now it's discontinued, but this one is an infrastructure heavy test. Deep dive will be into designing and monitoring, but not as much, right? Uh, you need to have a little bit of JSON proficiency, right? Uh, JavaScript object notation. The difficulty level for this test is kind of high. It, it, it is an expert level certification at the end of the day. Architect level uh, situations would be there, scenarios would be there. Uh, you just can't expect to have straightforward questions, yes or no answers in this one. There would be scenarios given to you based on those scenarios, you will have to find the right answer. And in certain cases, there would not be a wrong answer. There would be two or three right answers. But for the context, you would have to choose which one works the best in this particular situation, just what an architect does, right? So you can supplement this one with either AZ-104 or AZ-303 to get Azure Architect certification. I'd rather come from AZ-104, which is an easier exam. Uh, that being said, uh, 40, to, 40 to 60 questions, uh, they say that ca can come onto the exam, but like 51, 52 is usually the norm. Uh, passing score would be 700. The next exam that we are going to be talking about is AZ-400 or DevOps Engineer exam aimed at experienced personnel, experienced developers, experienced operation people. If you're like comfortable with programming languages such as Python or like a .NET framework, uh, so this one has dev heavy knowledge, right? This is not on the architecting side of the things, this is on the DevOps side of the things. So this is dev heavy knowledge, 
and you will be working on a lot of past solutions you will be working with uh, azure functions you will be working in detail with kubernetes in certain cases batch processing and all that stuff and site reliability a lot of emphasis on source control with azure devops the platform azure devops right and best practices difficulty of this exam would be moderate to high mostly swinging towards the high side of the things right you can supplement this exam with either az104 or az204 to get an azure devops engineer expert certificate az400 is not sufficient by itself so logically i would supplement it with az204 because it's a step above that but it's in the same direction right az104 and 400 don't really go hand in hand knowledge wise but yeah if you want to cover the bases fair enough $165 as the cost of this one uh, total questions would be 40 to 60 for this uh, and passing score would be 700 and it's a three and a half hour exam so pretty much the same as all as your certificates now we make the move towards the infrastructure specialization certification if you're a server administrator if you're a hybrid cloud operator these are the certifications for you this section is for you First one is AZ600, which is hybrid cloud with Microsoft Azure Stack. So this is an associate level certification, which is aimed at Azure Stack operators and infrastructure admins, right? Difficulty, I would say it's moderate. It's not super difficult. You should have BCDR knowledge. You should have uh, knowledge about basic networking, infrastructure, a little bit of DevOps, because you are at the end of the day, expected to uh, work with Azure Stack environment and a, a hybrid environment in the sense. Exam cost for this one is $165 and for 60 questions are there that you have to finish in 180 minutes. 700 is the passing score though. Moving on, we have AZ800. Microsoft have discontinued uh, NCSE and MCSA and they have replaced them unofficially with AZ800 and AZ801. AZ800 is Windows Server Admin Hybrid Core Infrastructure. Still aimed at on-premises server administrators. It's very infra-heavy. It kind of looks like 20740 and 20741. It's, it's kind of like a combination of those two. It's highly focused on AD, it's highly focused on virtualization and networking. Moving on, we have Azure 801. AZ801 is Windows Server Hybrid Advanced Services. It kind of looks like 20742 Windows Server 2016 exam, but with a little bit of Microsoft Azure Cloud in that. It's super focused on uh, high availability, migration, disaster recovery, security, and has a lot of on-premises and hybrid integration scenarios within it. This is mostly aimed at people who are experienced server admins. 55 something questions on this test, 40 to 60 technically, and 700 is the passing. Now, these are the certifications for our database experts, right? Could be DBAs, could be data engineers, could be data scientists. We have DP100, which is designing and implementing data science solution. If you're a data scientist, this is the one for you. It's an associate level certification by itself. You take this test and you're certified. Uh, this is aimed at data science and ml practitioners moderate in difficulty uh, there's a lot of model training and uh, machine learning deployment uh, on azure that's involved in this one you can expect 40 to 60 questions on the test and 700 are the passing marks out of a thousand now the next one is dp103 if you are a database administrator or a data engineer dp103 is the exam for you it's data engineering on Azure. It's focused on Azure database and storage offering and how you can leverage them to build your solution or for your applications, right? Uh, difficulty would be moderate to high on this one. If you don't want to step into this one directly and it seems a little difficult for you, it, it might if you're new to the cloud, I would suggest going with DP900 first and then going into DP103. That would make more logical sense if you are a DBA or a DE. Now, the next one is DP300, an associate level certification again, uh, which is aimed at experienced database admins, right? It's highly focused on MS SQL, right? So if you have SQL knowledge, this would be the test that you take. Um, there's a lot of on-prem to Azure integration uh, that's involved in this particular course, this particular test. 
more so than DP103. DP103 is more of a data engineering thing. There's a lot of Azure database technologies and on-prem database technologies involved into this one, right? I would say the difficulty level of this one is hard. It's, it's not a simple test, but still it's an associate level certification with 40 to 60 questions that you can expect and 700 marks if to pass this one. So next thing we move into is the speciality certifications. First is DP420. It's cloud native applications using Cosmos DB. So this is more uh, aimed at data engineers who want to work with Cosmos DB or you want to be a Cosmos DB subject matter expert, right? So it's a specialization certificate which is aimed at people who are already proficient with developing applications on Azure and Azure SQL. It's a three hour certification test. Uh, you need 700 marks to pass and approximately 45 questions in each test that you would get at, at this one. If you're an SAP expert who's just moved on to Azure, AZ120 would be the certification that you would do. Uh, this is aimed at architects and engineers who have vast SAP experience. If you are looking at an SAP migration in the near future and you want to place yourself as an SME for that, this is the, this is the test for you, AZ120. So the next exam that we're going to be talking about is AZ140. This is mostly revolving around Windows Virtual Desktop. If you want to learn how WED works, number one, and how WED is implemented, uh, you can get into this specialist uh, specialization exam. This is approximately a 100 minute exam, so uh, an hour and 40 minutes, and you need 700 marks to pass this exam. Uh, AZ220 is an exam that you can take as well. This is aimed at IoT developers or Internet of Things pros who have coding skills. Uh, so that's a prerequisite. You must have uh, either Python or Java coding skills. Majorly, this exam consists of uh, setting up an IoT solution infrastructure, setting up IoT devices, um, and business integration scenarios. How would you integrate your business with the IoT practices that you have been preaching? AZ700 is Azure Network Engineer, one of the newest certifications that Microsoft has. It's an associate level test, and it kind of feels like AZ104, AZ500. It has a similar vibe as those two exams. It's aimed at SMEs who have knowledge of Azure networking and Azure security and even infra skills. So it would be great to do AZ104 before this one. There's inter-site connectivity that would be in detail in this one, firewalls, routing and network security that you would be seeing in this test. So that's it. I hope you found this to be helpful. 20 different exams, so many certifications to choose from. Uh, took a ton of time to research all of this material. If you have any questions regarding all of this, please feel free to drop a comment, keep the conversation going so that we can make a thread where people can find their answers. Please feel free to subscribe if you like this and uh, yeah, I'll see you in another one. Take care.